بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله we continue going over the second hadith in Arba'in and Nawawiyah this hadith is a tremendous hadith and it is a must that بإذن الله تعالى as we previously mentioned while going over this hadith that we have the proper materials with regards to pencils, pens, and notebooks, and the like. Because this is very vital that we take notes, that we can go back and review, so that we may, bi ta'ala, gain some understanding of the benefits that are contained within this hadith. We spoke about the shahadatan in the last two classes or last three classes if we exclude the or if we include rather the introduction uh, as we restarted we move on to the next pillar which is the establishment of the prayer لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وتقيم الصلاة and to establish the prayer فقال العلامة شيخ صالح الفوزان حفظ الله تعالى أي تؤدي الصلوات الخمسة الفروض في اليوم والليلة he said it means to perform the five prayers that are obligatory in the day and in the night the Shaykh, he then he says, مَا مَعْنَا تُقِيمُهَا And what is the meaning of the establishment of the prayer? لَأَنَّهُ مَا قَالْ أَن تُصَلِّي Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not say, and to pray it. نعم, he did not say, أَن تُصَلِّي And to pray the prayers. And this shows you, this is an indication to you, that the establishment of the prayer includes something much greater than the mere performing of the performance of the prayers. Naam. Wa inna ma qal, the Shaykh he says, and verily he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa tuqimu salah, and to establish the prayer. La inna maqsuda iqamatu salah, wa laysa maqsuda salawat al-aw surat al-salah faqat. He said, because what is intended is the establishment of the prayer and not just the pitch of the prayer. Not just the pitch of the prayer by itself. Naam. فَتُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ بِأَنْ تَأْتِيَ بِهَا كَمَا جَاءَ بِهَا النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said in the establishment of the prayer, it is to establish the prayer just as it comes and was done by the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. نعم. لقوله صلى الله وسلامه عليه صلوا كما رأيتموني أصلي like this, like the uh, statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which indicates to us that we have to perform our salawat upon the same mannerisms, upon the same way that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli." Pray as you see me praying, as it comes from the Hadith of Malik that has been collected by Al Bukhari. Naam. But this is incumbent, ya ibad Allah. That we have to perform our prayers. We have to pray our prayers. Establish our prayers upon the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he taught us how to pray. So then when a person understands this, he would realize that it is not sufficient for him to merely pray the way in which he was directed to pray by the elders of his family or the elders of his people or yani, uh, due to what the uh, so-called, yani, mashaykh of his land or the mashaykh of his land, fi'lan, what they say. 
but rather he must do so based upon the proofs and the evidences. Not blind following, but upon the proofs and the evidences. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, pray as you see me praying. Not pray the way you saw your father praying, or pray the way you saw your grandfather praying, or your uncle, or whoever. But pray the way you see me praying. Which means that we have to have a proof for every single thing that we do inside of Salah. We have to strive to learn the Salah upon this manner with his proofs and his evidences. And based upon the proofs and based upon the evidences, are we then to go forward with the action? Naam, after knowing the way that the Prophet wasallam had prayed, then we have to pray upon this manner tamaman, completely. Bithnillahi ta'ala. And the Prophet wasallam he tells us the great reward that a person will get from praying upon this manner. As we know, it is incumbent for us to pray upon this manner. But the Prophet wasallam he tells us, he informs us of the great reward that one will get when he prays the way in which he has been commanded to pray. As the Prophet wasallam he said, مَنْ تَبَضَّعَ كَمَا أُمِرَ وَصَلَّ كَمَا أُمِرَ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا قَدَّمَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ Hadith Hassan, Hassanuhu al-Imam al-Bani fi sahiyah al-Targhib wa al-Targhib. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Whoever makes the wudu, the way in which he has been commanded to, and whoever prays, the way in which he has been commanded to pray, then he will be forgiven that which has proceeded from actions. He will be forgiven that which has proceeded from actions, meaning from his bad actions, from his sins. Naam. This is for the one who does what? Who makes the wudu, the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded them to make the wudu. The one who prays the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded them to pray. So when one understands the reality of this, then one understands that there is no option. There is no alternative. There is no other way. The only way to make the wudu is the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had taught us. The only way to pray is the way that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us. There is no alternative. There is no other option. This is what we have to do. But in order to do such, it will require from us that we will have to study. We will have to study to the best of our ability, uh, utilizing the resources of which we have access to. We will have to do this bithnillahi ta'ala. So we will have to strive to learn what are the proofs and the evidences. What was exactly the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed so that we may pray. And this is what is meant. This is what is intended. This is what, this is a key component of the establishment of the prayer. This is a key component of the establishment of the prayer. Naam. So in your notes, inshallah ta'ala. I want you to write down those aspects that are needed in order for an individual to establish the prayer. First and foremost on that list, it has to be that the prayer must be performed the way in which the Prophet wasallam taught us to pray, the way that the Prophet wasallam used to pray. Now, this is the first that we have to pray. The way that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray, the way he taught us how to pray, and the proof of that is what the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that has been collected by Imam al Bukhari, rahimahullah taala, from the Hadith of Malik, naam, radiyallahu taala anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Sallu kama raaytumuni usalli." Pray as you see me praying. The Shaykh, he goes on and he says, فَالَّذِي رَآهُ بِعَيْنِهِ يَقْتَدِي بِهِ So whoever has saw the Prophet ﷺ with his eye, then he has to pray and he has to imitate the Prophet ﷺ based upon what he saw. Ma'am, He has to pray based upon what he saw, what he learned directly from the Prophet ﷺ. But with regards to all of those who lived after the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then the shaykh, he says, وَالَّذِي بَلَغَهُ خَبَرُهُ And for the one who it reaches him, the information, naam, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with regards to how he prayed, وَحَدِيثُ الصَّحِيحَ 
and those narrations, those ahadith that are authentic. Naam. Yam talithu. Aw. Yam tathinu. Afwan. Yam tathinu. Wa yusalli kama fil ahadith of sahiha. Allati balagatu. Then he has to pray exactly upon the manner that is described in those ahadith that had reached him. This is how he is to pray. وَهَذَا مِنْ إِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ And this is from the establishment of the prayer. وَأَنْ يُصَلِّي عَلَىٰ الصِّفَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ النَّبِيَ الَّتِي كَانَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم يؤدي الصلاة بها And he has to pray upon the description of which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray upon. وَلَا يُزِيدُ مِنْ عِنْدِ And he does not add from himself. He does not add things to the salah, to the salah from himself. Naam. Aw yunqisa minha. Nor does he take away from it. He doesn't add anything to the prayer from his own self. Nor does he take away from it. So when it comes to this bab, as in all of the other abawab, naam, is bid'ah an option uh, for a person now to bring some addition to that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was upon in the salah. Is this an option? Or for a person to take away some aspects from the salah that the Prophet used to be upon, that he removes it, he takes it away, deems it unnecessary, and so on and so forth. Is this an option? Then we see clearly another illustration how bid'ah is never an option. Not here and not in other than here. When it comes to the ibadat, when it comes to the deen of al-Islam, when it comes to the sharia, then bid'ah is not an option. Naam. And whoever comes forth with such a bid'ah, then he will not be of those who have established the prayer. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith of Aisha, our mother radiyallahu ta'ala anha, fi ma rawahu al-imam al-Bukhari, fi al-Sahihi, man amina, aw, man ahdatha fi amrina hadha, ma laysa minhu, fahu raddun. Whoever introduces into this affair of ours, that which is not from it, then it is rejected. Naam, wa fi riwaya, in the Muslim, and in a narration with Muslim, man amina amina, laysa alayhi amruna, fahu raddun. Whoever does an action, that does not have on it our command, that it is rejected. That it is rejected. Naam. So bid'ah is not an option. So if you want to be from those who establish the prayer, then we have to be of those who pray the way in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray. Exactly. And this is the first point. Secondly, from the establishment of the prayer, as the Shaykh goes on and he says, وَكَذَلِكَ مِنْ إِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ إِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ And likewise, from the establishment of the prayer, أَنْ يُصَلِّيهَا فِي الْوَقْتِ That he has to be prayed inside of his proper time. Has to be prayed inside of his proper time. الَّذِي حَدَّدَهُ اللَّهُ لَهَا That time of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has specified for it. Naam. The time of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specified for it. So we have to pray on time. And praying on time is from the establishment of the prayer. وقال الله تعالى الله تعالى هي سس إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا. And this is in Surah An-Nisa, and it's verse one hundred and three, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he says, and verily the prayer is upon the believers at set times. Now, so we have to pray the prayer inside of their times. فلا يخرجها عن وقتها, and we cannot. Let the time elapse. Um, we cannot delay the prayer until after its time. لِأَنَّ الْمَقْصُودَ أَنْ يُصَلِّيَ كَمَا أَمَرَهُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَمَرَكَ أَنْ تُصَلِّيَ الصَّلَاةَ فِي وَقْتِهَا And because what is intended is that we have to pray as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded us to pray and Allah has commanded you to pray, Ya Abdullah, upon it's time, or in its time, to pray the prayer in its time. وَقَدْ سُئِلَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَيُّ الْأَعْمَالِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he was asked, which of the actions are most beloved to Allah? نعم, as it comes in a hadith that's mutafiqun alayhi, from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه, where, يعني, and which of the actions are most beloved to Allah? فَقَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم, الصلاة لوقتها. The prayer at his time. The prayer at his proper time. Naam. وَأَمَّا مَنْ يَتَصَرَّفُ 
ويصلي على هواه متى أراد ومتى ما قام من نومه أو فرغ من شغله فهذا صلاته غير الصحيح نعم صلاته غير الصحيح and for the one who he lets the time elapse and he prays according to his own desires whenever he wants to whenever he wakes up from his sleep whenever he gets off of work uh, whenever his, he gets free time away from his work and so on and so forth then this one his salat is not correct his salat is not correct because we have not been commanded to pray upon our whims we have not been commanded to pray when we want how we want and so on and so forth but rather we've been commanded to pray upon a set description at set times so we have to establish the prayer the way we, it was taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the times that have been allotted for the salawat at the times of the prayers we have to pray like this now but for the one who yeah he, he prays when he wants he's like sadaqa when it comes to it i pray when i get around to it i pray whenever i wake up Now he has no intention in his mind or he has no concern in his mind with regards to his sleep or regards to his prayer or with respect to his sleep and his prayer but whenever he gets up then he prays now this is not correct ya ibadullah as the ulama they explain that for the one who stays up throughout the night for whatever reason it may be whatever reason it may be now he stays up and he's up almost all night and then it's almost time for salat al-fajr ah they say it's not for him to go to sleep at that time la yajuz because if he would to sleep right before fajr qubail al fajr but what happen is he will miss fajr so they say for him he can't go to sleep now salat al fajr is in 20 minutes now you can't now you can't go to sleep you have to wait up to fajr you pray fajr in his time naam so a person has to be mindful he has to look at his actions he has to look at his lifestyle and so on and so forth to make sure that he's praying at the proper time naam and likewise those who say well whenever yani i go for work then i'll pray as you find is prevalent where ya the billah many people who will delay the salawat and you find them مثلا coming to the masjid for maghrib naam they come to the masjid for maghrib but you find them praying dhuhr and asr before maghrib and you ask akhi what do you do why the make up dhuhr the make up asr why cuz he was at work ya subhanallah naam we were put on this world to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we not been put on this world to work for fulan wa alan now i'm to work for so one and so forth now so one so one so on, such and such but we been put here to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so bila shak wa bila rayb the salawat it comes first the prayer comes first now when it's time to pray then we pray and well what is alhamd we have a window of which we can pray now so it's not like you have five five minutes to pray got to pray within this five minute time frame and the like we have flexibility with regards to the 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 uh the time frame which we have been given so there's no excuse that a person will come daily or on those days in which he works and he will have to make up uh dhuhr and asr in the time of maghrib man you have some people even worse than this they'll come in the time of isha and make up dhuhr asr and maghrib naam we've seen this people will come in the time of isha and they're going to make up dhuhr asr and maghrib this is not from the establishment of the prayer this is not permissible this is not what we have been commanded to do naam but we have to make sure that we pray our prayers during their times because ala kulli hal we fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than we fear anything else naam and that fear that we have for allah is not like the fear we have for anything else so when a person understands this proper fear then nothing will get in the way of him fulfilling his obligations to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's not a boss in this world there's not a single boss on this planet naam that 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 should have a muslim delaying his salawat naam but he has to be has to tell that that individual in a in a, in a nice manner He has to tell that individual and uh, using wisdom and so on and so forth, but uncompromisingly, this is what it is. Now that when it's time for me to pray, I have to pray, and 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 and, and that's not an option. That's not an option. Now, and if they don't uh, like this, then alhamdulillah, the earth is spacious. Allah subhanahu wa taala 
He will bless him with a job in which he won't have these difficulties. The likes of this behavior is not acceptable whatsoever. The Shaykh says, Because a person that will pray upon this manner, meaning that whenever he gets up, whenever he feels like it, whenever he gets off of work, and so on and so forth, this is an individual who would not be praying upon the manner of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do. Uh, but rather you'll find this person who prays like this whenever he wants, how he wants, whenever he gets up from his sleep, whenever he gets time off from work, and so on and so forth, this person will be praying according to his desires. Whatever his desires dictate, that's how he'll be praying. So from the establishment of the prayer, we have to pray the way in which the Prophet wasallam taught us how to pray, and we have to pray our salah in his right time. وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ إِقَامَةِ الصَّلَاةِ And likewise, from the establishment of the prayer, الْخُشُورِ فِيهَا We have to have khushur inside the salah. We have to have humility inside the salah. We have to be have yani, that, that humility, that stillness, that presence of mind, and so on and so forth, inside the salah. And the shaykh, he says, وَحُضُورُ uh, الْقَلْبِ نعم, A person, his heart has to be attentive when he's praying. His heart should be attentive as to what he's doing, what he's saying, yani, uh, who's, he, who's he standing in front of, so on and so forth. It has to be there. فَالَّذِي يُصَلِّي نَعَمْ بِجِسْمِهِ وَلَكِنَّ قَلْبَهُ غَائِبٌ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ إِلَّا مَا عَقَلَ بِهِ أَوْ مِنْهَا وَحَضَرَ قَلْبُهُ فِيهَا the, yani, the, the Shaykh, he says, because the one who he prays with his body, uh, but his heart is not present. His heart is neglectful. I want you to listen to this sentence now. The Shaykh, he says, لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ إِلَّا مَا عَقَلَ مِنْهَا وَحَضَرَ قَلْبُهُ فِيهَا He will not have from his salah except that which he was attentive in and his heart was present for. That's all he'll get from his salah. Only that which his heart was yani, uh, uh, present for and he was attentive. This is what he'll get from his salah. Naam. So khushur is a vital aspect when it comes to the establishment of the prayer. It's a vital aspect when it comes to the establishment of the prayer. It's not enough that a person brings the, the, the description of the prayer. Huh? That's a portion of it. But that's not all of it. It's not enough that he'll pray in his time. That's a portion of it, a very significant portion of it, but not all of it. But also, while doing these two, he has to have khushur. He has to have khushur. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Qad aflah al That verily, the believers, they are already successful. al hum, those whom, fi salatihim khashi'un. Those who are humble in their prayers. Those who have khushur. Inside of, yani, when they pray, they have khushur. This is, this is a must, yani. This is something that is vital. Huh? It is a must. Allah, Allah Ta'ala, He says, uh, And this is in reference to Allah Ta'ala's statement, And seek assistance with, in prayer, uh, in patience and prayer. In patience and prayer. And then Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And then verily it, meaning the prayer, is something that is tremendous except upon those who have khushur. It's something that is great, hard, difficult except upon those who have khushur. So khushur, ya ibadullah, is vital. The Shaykh says, يعني الصلاة ثقيلة إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Meaning that the prayer is heavy except for on those who have khushur. نعم وإنها تكون عليهم ميسرة نعم but those who have khushur the salat will be for them easy it will be easy upon them نعم and they will find the light inside the salat because the khushur روح الصلاة I want everyone to write this down put some stars asterisks whatever you want to put by it that the khushur it is the soul of the prayer. It is the spirit of the prayer. Naam. Wa sala bila khushur ka jasadin bila ruh. 
The prayer without khushur is like a body without a soul. You understand? Because the khushur, it is the soul of the prayer. And the prayer without the khushur is like a body without a soul. That is very significant. Because a body that is devoid of a soul. Is there any benefit in it? Is there? And of course we all know the answer to this is no. Because listen, if a person has yeah, I mean, some construction he needs done, you understand? So he wants to get some day laborers, right? And because he needs, yeah, I need to hire some people for, you know, drywall or for, yeah, I mean, some electric, electrical work or so on and so forth. Yeah? But yeah, when he goes to find these day laborers, right? Does he not seek out those individuals who have a body and a soul? Uh, correct. That's what he does. He goes to those places, wherever they may be, employment agencies, whatever, uh, to seek out those ones who have a body and a soul. You never find anyone who's in need of a day laborer or he needs someone to come and paint his house. And he goes to the graveyard and starts seeing who's available. Uh, you don't find that happening. Why? Because those bodies then, uh, the soul has been removed from it or the soul has been uh, separated from it. They're dead. But yeah. So the benefit lies where? With the body that has a soul. Now, so when it comes to the salah, if the soul of the salah is the khushur, if you remove its soul, you remove the khushur, where's the benefit? Where's the benefit? You understand? Because the shaykh, he says that you will be rewarded for your prayer and you will get out of your prayer and be rewarded for your prayer as much as you are attentive in it, as much as your heart is present. As much as you are attentive, as much as your heart is present. You understand? So this is something that is... Tremendously important. This issue of khushur is tremendously important. Now, each and every one of us, we know ourselves, right? We know ourselves better than the person sitting next to us, in front of us, or behind us. You understand? We have to ask ourselves and be honest with ourselves and serious yeah, when, in with this regard. How much have we really concentrated on this issue of khushur? How much have we really fought ourselves? How much have we really struggled against ourselves when it comes to khushur? And have a khushur in the prayer. How much are we really striving and making an effort to have khushur in the prayer? Because having khushur is a vital aspect of the establishment of the prayer. A vital aspect in the establishment of the prayer. Now, as a, as a, now, but yeah. So, again, we have to. Be of those. If we want to be successful, you have to be of those who have khushur. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out in Surah Al-Mu'minun in verse 1 and 2, that verily the believers, they are already successful. Those who have khushur in their prayers. Those who have khushur in their prayers. Naam. Fourthly, وَمَنْ إِقَامَةِ الصَّلَاةِ صَلَاةُهَا في المساجد مع جماعة and also from the establishment of the prayer is to pray inside of the masajid مع الجماعة with the جماعة in congregation نعم. and this is of course with regards to the men of the ummah that they are to pray in the, in the masjid uh, in جماعة now this also shows you the importance of the masajid or from the importance of the masajid and from the importance of having our places of residence close to and nearby the masajid so that what so that we can aid and assist ourselves when it, with regards to praying in jama'ah because listen if a person lives an hour away from the masjid Huh? What's the probability you think that person is going to be there every day for Fajr? He lives an hour away. You understand? So just to go and come back is two hours. Not mentioning however long it takes for him to pray, make dhikr, read some Quran, and so on and so forth. How many times a day do you think a person is really going to do that? You understand? Mm. So this shows us now that we, all, we have to look out for ourselves and not set ourselves up for loss, meaning the men of the ummah. It is not acceptable that we will set ourselves up for loss. But we should live in, 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 in relatively uh, 
easy distances from the masjid that would help us into the fulfillment of this obligation of praying in jama'ah. Now, the Shaykh says, "For inna al-jama'ah wajiba," because verily praying in jama'ah in congregation for the men, that it is something that is wajib. It is incumbent. Huh? It is incumbent. It is incumbent on the ayyan. It's incumbent upon the individual. This is not something that's for the kifaya. That oh, if there's a jama'ah in the masjid, then the rest of us don't gotta go. No, this is something that everyone huh, has to go unless he has a legislative excuse. But without a legislative excuse, then he has to go. He has to go and pray in jama'ah. Ah, huh? so this shows us that the concern we need to have for the masjid. This shows us the concern we need to have for the masjid because they are places that are extremely important. Because for the men, then these will be the places wherein they establish their prayer. Now, when a person looks at it from this standpoint, the masjid huh, should never, ever have to ask for any type of donations or anything of that nature. The masjid should never have to ask because when a person realizes the intrinsic value of the masjid and the importance of the masjid because for the man this is something that is an integral part in him establishing his prayer then the masjid should never have to ask for donations when a person when a woman when she realizes the importance of the masjid with, with regards to the religious or the religion of her yani her husband and of her sons huh and 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 and, and how vital it is for them to establish the prayer then she should be giving whatever she can without them as should ever having to ask. Without them ever having to ask. Naam? But they should make sure, they should make it their business to take care of the masjid. Just more than they take care of their homes. Because if you ask a person, for example, listen, Ya Abdullah, why you take care of your home like that? Why you pay your bills? Why you pay your rent? Why you make sure you got this? Why you make sure you got that? Then you start telling you things like, oh, so, you know, I want to be homeless. I want to, you know, I want to have a place, uh, you know, uh, you know, some type of shelter from the elements and, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah. the first thing that the Abd will be asked about Yom al Qiyam will be his prayer. It's the first thing he's asked about, his prayer. Uh, so when a person looks at that now, being out in the cold, rain falling on your head, huh? Yom al Qiyamah, being asked about your prayer first, and if that's good, then alhamdulillah, yani, what's behind is going to be better for him. But if it's bad, subhanAllah, he's in trouble. So now we add these two together. Which one is more severe? Not establishing the prayer, of course. It's more severe. Not establishing the prayer. So when you look at it from this standpoint, yes, we're not saying, yeah, don't worry about your housing and so on and so forth. We're not saying that. We're not advocates of that. No. Worry about your housing. Okay? Make sure you pay your bills and you, and you, you take care of those responsibilities that are upon you in the night. Do that. But also understand that even more important than that is making sure that the masjids are taken care of because it's the job of the Muslims to take care of the masjid. So we have to make sure it's taken care of. Naam? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said to us a hadith that is tremendous It should make every man second guess his whole situation When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said Masami anida Falam yujib Fala salata lahu illa min uzrin This hadith has been collected by Ibn Majah Wa Ibn Habban And others Naam Where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that whoever hears the call and then he doesn't answer it, then there's no salat for him, except if he had a legislative excuse. Whoever hears the call and he doesn't answer it, there's no prayer for him unless he had a legislative excuse. You understand? So praying in jama'ah for the rijal for the men, this is something that is a must. It is incumbent. Naam. And what will help and aid and facilitate in that, of course, will be what? Taking care of the masajid, making sure that they have what they need so that they stay open, making sure that we take care of them, and so on and so forth. So it is a tragedy. It is a tragedy if the masjid will ever have to come and ask. It's a tragedy. If the masjid ever has to come and ask for donations, then I want the men of that community to chalk that up as a loss, as a failure. 
because they shouldn't have to ask. But the men should make it their business to see what's going on. What does it need? What is the rent? So he makes sure it gets paid. Huh? What 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 does it cost to pay for the, the utilities on a monthly basis? So he makes sure the money is there. So on and so forth. Now, I'm, so if the masjid has to come and ask for the likes of these things, then I want the men in that community to put their heads down in shame because they have failed. They have failed. Now, I'm. The Sheikh goes on and he says, because the Mu'advan, he says, Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala al-falah. The Mu'advan, he says, come to the salah. Come to the, come to the success. Hayya ala al-falah. Come to the success. Naam. Yani, Sheikh Fawzani says, meaning, Ta'alaw, sallu ma'al jama'ah. He said, mean, come, pray in congregation. Pray in the congregation for buyutillah azza wa jal. In the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal. Illa man kana lahu udhrun. Except for the one who has an excuse. Naam. Aw laysa indahu jama'ah. Or he lives in a place where there's no jama'ah. You understand? Aw laysa indahu masjid. Fa yusalli fi makani. Or a place that he doesn't have a masjid. He's in an area, doesn't have a masjid. So therefore he has no choice but to pray where he's at. You understand? وَأَمَّا الَّذِي حَوْلَ الْمَسْجِدِ However, those who are near to the masjid, وَيَسْمَعُ الْأَذَانِ And they hear the adhan, وَهُوَ مُعَافَ And he one who is healthy, وَآمِنُ And one who is in a state of safety, فَلَا صَلَاةَ لَهُ إِذَا صَلَّى فِي بَيْتِهِ Then there will be no salah for him if he prays in his house. So again, the one who doesn't have a jama'ah, where he's at, or the one who has a legislative excuse, or the one who there's no masjid where he's at, so he's forced to pray wherever he may be, huh? then they have an excuse. Okay? But as far as the one who's near to the masjid, he hears the other, he's one who is healthy, in a state of uh, peace, and he has no fear, in a state of security, and he doesn't pray in the masjid. And he prays in his house, then there's no prayer for him. Then there's no prayer for him. Now, and these four things in which we mentioned, this is from the establishment of the prayer. It's from the establishment of the prayer, and I'm stressing the word from the establishment of the prayer. So as to recap, Number one, we have to pray the way in which the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to pray. The way that he taught us how to pray. The way that he used to pray wasallam. This is number one. Number two, we have to pray our prayers at their proper times. Number three, we have to have khushur. We have to have khushur inside our salah. And number four is that for the men, they have to pray in jama'ah. They have to pray in jama'ah. They have to pray in conjugation. Naam. And this is from the establishment of the prayer. But there are more aspects. But this is what the Sheikh he mentioned. So this is what we're going to suffice ourselves with. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بارك الله فيكم